Hello Balancers. Whether this is your first time tuning into the Balance Theory podcast or whether you are a regular balancer, a very warm welcome goes out to you today. It's so strange. I find whenever we're gearing up to like a break period, it's almost like everything just gets so intense. Everything's so busy, everything's so stressful. And there's just like everything's gearing up to this head point, which is a break. So I am so looking forward to a couple weeks off. I hope you've all got something to look forward to as well, whether it is a prolonged period off or just some time over the festive season. You know, whether you're going anywhere or not, I hope you take the time to be with your loved ones and really recharge and replenish whatever it is that your balance needs at this point in time. I think it's also a nice reflective point for us to pause, you know, really enjoy and spend time with those we care most about and consider how we want to shape ourselves in the new year, how we want to define ourselves and things we want to improve on best. So I love this time of year, apart from the guilt-free eating, the chilling out, the just, you know, doing whatever you want. I'm also really looking forward to a little rest. So for those of you who missed in last week's podcast, this will be the final one for the year. And it's a really exciting one. So I'm so excited to end it uh, with this special guest. And we will be back on the 11th of January. Also, just quickly, before I share some info about today's pod, I put up a poll on socials a couple of weeks ago about whether you guys want to see my reading list of the year. So I'm just scraping in the 20th book of the year and all of you said, hell yes. So I will be posting that on my socials. If you do need to top up yours for the new year, look out for that. I read some real gems this year, so I'm keen to share that with you all. And as always, if you have any suggestions for me to add to my 2021 list, please shoot them over. Alrighty, but for today, I have the beautiful Shannon Lawson on. I'm privileged enough to have been able to get to know her personally down at Hustle Boxing, which if any of you follow my personal page, you know I'm obsessed with. I attend there most weeks. And for those of you who only know Shannon as the incredible model she is, you might be pleasantly surprised to know that she has recently taken the plunge and dived into the fitness space Uh, in terms of her career. So today we talk all about that shift. Speaking of, we actually dived into some advice when it comes to taking the plunge or shifting career. So that was a really cool little segment. We also talk about the modeling industry in general. Um, Having been in it for almost a decade now, she has seen quite a shift and the integration of social media and how that's actually changed and played around with what we see as a model and the benefits as well as the negatives of that today. This also led us to a nice chat about you know, social media, how, how she feels personally about upkeeping a social account of almost 150,000 followers. Um, and she shares why she thinks Instagram is really like a pokey machine. And again, serves as a nice reminder that it is just the highlights reel. We finally end on her sharing what her favorite job ever was and some awesome beauty tips. So I have been dying to ask her this question about beauty tips because she shared a really cool one about a hair mask. And I was really glad I did because she shared some further awesome tips that are now going to be a non-negotiable part of my schedule moving forward. So I'm keen for you guys to hear all of that and how you can integrate that into your own routines. I hope you loved today's show. If you hadn't had a chance already to leave us a review or rating on Apple Podcasts, it would mean the absolute world to us and future listeners as well. And feel free to share this pod with anyone who you think might enjoy it. Let's get into it. Shannon, beautiful Shannon, welcome to the Balance Theory Podcast. Oh my God, thank you for having me. I'm so flattered. Oh, it's an absolute honor. It's, it's been really nice, you know, bumping into you at Hustle and watching your journey grow into a trainer. I know a lot of people might not know that about you. And we're going to get all into behind the scenes, Shannon, today. But it's, it's really lovely to have you on and get to chat a bit more about who you are and what you do. Yeah, talk about my balance theory of how I juggle things. But yes. <laughs> we'll get into that. Definitely. So to kick it off, why don't we talk about what a standard day in the life of Shannon looks like? And let's not go with a Friday because I know your Fridays are your less pumped days. Let's go for like a 5 a.m. start day and and tell us a bit what that looks like. Uh, Yeah. So on Mondays, I kind of get straight into teaching. So I'm there from, I wake up at 4.30 a.m. and then I teach um, about three classes and I work on reception for a few hours. Uh, And then I will run to shoots or have a content day Monday. I don't usually book a job. It's usually everyone gets back into the office and um, all the clients start hitting us up for our availability for the rest of the week. So it might be more of a content day in terms of social media and generating um, 
some pictures and captions and footage for um, briefs that we receive. And then Tuesday, I definitely put aside for hustle. And Wednesday, Thursday is definitely my shoot day. So I will be waking up early doing beach shoots or e-com shoots. Uh, and e-com is basically online shopping shoots, which is completely regular. So I probably have two or three uh, clients through the week uh, that hit me up for jobs and then Friday as you've caught me now <laughs> is my kind of house admin talking to you um, going through selects I just did a shoot on Wednesday for a magazine so we're just editing some photos and getting content together and yeah weekends then it's for me I get to train I get to exercise I get to go for walks so do it yeah it, it's quite busy nice and so when people say to you what do you do for work what do you say I used to be really embarrassed about that question, funnily enough. I would never say I was a model first and foremost because I feel like there's such a stigma about meeting a model in, in any sort of setting. Um, so I used to lie and I, I said I'd work in fashion um, or online shopping, which technically <laughs> I do. Not a lie. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now I kind of round it off because I wear so many hats over the, over the last few years. I do so many jobs. Um, I just stay self-employed. And once the ball starts rolling, I kind of go into more detail. I model full time. Uh, and then I'm slowly getting into fitness. To, um, hopefully, yeah, say, I don't know. And then we'll start a family next year. So I don't know, add mum to the job title as well. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Whack that on your plate too. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure uh, <laughs> at least you're, you're used to the 4.30 a.m. starts already. <laughs> yeah, it's good practice, as my partner would say. <laughs> no, I love that. So talk to me a little bit about um, your, so obviously day-to-day -day looks a little bit different. It's not as though you've got a nine-to-five and, and Monday to Friday looks the same. So how about your like non-negotiable rituals and habits? How do you make sure that you, or firstly, do you have any and what are they? And how do you make sure you kind of keep on top of those amongst your crazy schedule? Yeah, so I can't plan like more than two days out. And it's really frustrating with Tom and booking holidays and time for us. Uh, I literally wait for the phone call or like the text messages at five o'clock every night to tell me what the next day looks like. So it's very hard for me to plan um, classes or workouts for myself. I kind of have to do the off peak because it's something I can fit in every now and then. But um, my own like rituals to my day to day is like, I can never skip breakfast. It's like, I do not start my day without breakfast. I never actually drank coffee into the last few months and it's not a habit, but I love my tea. You probably so many, drinking so many model myth busting happening right now. So many Is uh, it? being busted, loves breakfast, not really into coffee, but now loves it. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah, I know. The nineties model probably looks so different to the 2020 model. Um, 100%. Yeah. We all eat, we all try and get that sleep. Uh, we don't really party and it's a COVID year. So thank God there's no like real traveling and being stuck on flights at the moment. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm so fortunate to have, you know, at least one hour a day to myself where I can just sit down and get into my own head and take the dog for a walk, you know, do my exercise, but life gets hectic. And if I can just put that one hour a day aside and just Zen, it could even be watching Real Housewives, whatever. But um, whatever. yeah, I think, I think I have to put that time aside for myself. So you make sure every single day you allot an hour and is that realistic? Like, do you yeah. always get it? Uh, yes. I mean, in terms of like sharing the house with Tom and he's usually working nights and whatnot. So yeah, throughout the day, I at least have one hour, which I, is non-negotiable and I will do whatever I feel on the day because I do have those days where I'm in a slump and I just don't feel like working out. All I want is a glass of wine and Real Housewives. So whatever it is, I put it aside. I put my podcast on probably this one later and I'll hear my voice and I'll be like, oh my God. Um, <laughs> it's but not yeah, any, anything yeah, that makes me happy for the day and it resets me, I guess. Yeah. No, I like that because it's obviously very different. I'm a nine to five worker. And so my, um, or my balance or my rituals and that is quite regimented. Like I know every morning I can work out mm. and then I shower, I have breakfast to start my day. Um, but for anyone listening who might have a bit of a hectic schedule for you, I think it's a nice like pledge to self to have like, okay, I'm having one hour every single day, no matter where that fits in, it can depend on your, yeah. whatever your day looks like. But I think that's a nice like commitment to make and you know, and I'm sure you like, you look forward to that time as well. 
Oh, I love being my most, by myself. It's really sad. I think I would have loved like a hotel quarantine for two weeks by myself. I would have thrived. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I have to always be switched on and personable and being self-employed. It's very much about creating networks and always on the go. And my nine to five might not be literally a nine to five, mm. but I always make sure I'm working between sort of a nine to five period, no matter what that is. And if working for me means going to the gym for, you know, creating my body for my look, to you know market or if it's creating content or if it's emailing or hitting up brands i make sure um that my mindset i can't wait for jobs i have to make sure that i'm chasing them and creating um, avenues to yeah pick up work wherever i can so yeah it's not the nine to five but i make sure i work a nine to five wherever it is throughout the day yeah, no, I like that. And it's probably a good idea. If not, you, I think you can really easily veer off course and, you know, be working up till 10 o'clock at night and then people expect you to be available 10 o'clock at night and it can get really, like, it's good to have those boundaries for yourself. I think that's a big, big part of balance and, and helps you like, you know, commit and keep doing the things you love doing. And I'm sure that's an experience you've had as well. Yeah. And just learning the power of no, because you get so caught up in saying yes. And especially as women, we're always like, yes, I want to do that. I want to please everyone. Make them most real. You know, hunky dory. And yeah, you have to say no to certain things and just learn that it's not a diva thing. It's just, you are setting your boundaries and protecting yourself and making sure that you have the time that hour a day to go, okay, I'm rejuvenated. I'm ready to take on the next thing. Yeah. Love that. Have you found that in your experience of, you know, putting that hour aside for yourself and prioritizing your you time saying no to people. Have you found like you've had, you've pushed people away as a result? Um, I'm pretty fortunate. I mean, now that I'm heading into my thirties, I think just naturally I've learned to find my voice uh, in terms of work. I have bookers and agents and managers that can filter through some of the conversation and they know my schedule at the end of the day and they know what brands I hate to say that word, I guess I am a brand in a way that they want to create with me as well. So uh, there are conversations where we say thank you for the opportunity. It just doesn't fit for this time. And um, it's not a flat out no. Obviously, you want to support everyone, but it it is that protection of yourself and what what you're capable of and making sure that when you do give the effort, it is the right effort and 100% of it and not being half-assed because I would hate to say yes to everything and it not be my best work or, Mm. you know, the best relationship. And, you know, you don't want to walk away not being fulfilled by it because I'm younger me would do so many jobs and I'd just be exhausted. And I think, why did I do that today? I have no, I don't know why that happened. And it could have been a rest day or something more productive or with a different client. But Yeah. yeah, the power of no, I'm, I'm learning from it now. Yeah, no, I think it's quite powerful and it translates not only to like your jobs and work, but definitely to relationships. And the reason I actually asked, have you found you've pushed people away is because I think a lot of people don't say no out of the fear of, you know, like losing friends or not being liked by people. Yeah. And, and all I was really going to say to that is you, well, you probably don't need those people in your life anyway, because they're not supportive of what you need. Um, you know, on your journey. So I think everything you've just said then about your jobs and how it relates in your personal life is really like, there's some really good morsels there about how people can use that methodology or way of thinking when it comes to relationships. Cause you're right. At the end of the day, if you don't invest that time into yourself, you're really only going to be a half giver to whatever you're doing that day anyway. And it's, you know, even in just relationships in terms of, you know, just being human with your partners, your friends, your family, if your friends and family and, you know, your loved ones can't respect the power of no, then they're probably not fueling you um, to your fullest. And I don't know, I get a bit torn with saying no, but it's, it's, not, a it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing, but it definitely is. You don't want to drag out a conversation. Yeah. And you don't want to like have someone on like, you know, an email chain chain for like two, three weeks going, Oh yeah, maybe, Oh yeah. Maybe another day. Let's rain check that. Cause you spent two weeks of energy going back and forth. Like just nip it in the butt. Like I'd rather you just like move on and tell them straight up and they be straight up with you. Cause I've had clients go, Oh no, you're not the right fit. And I'm like, yep, done. Okay, good. I can move on. Yeah. And that's it. Like keep it going. You don't want to just drag it out for the sake of it. Yeah. You're not lingering out for some hope. <laughs> mm, totally. Yeah. No, definitely agree. 
Um, let's talk a little bit about your career shift. So, I mean, I, when I met you, you sort of just started on your fitness journey in terms of incorporating it into your career before that, yeah. were you, um, only modeling and kind of in that industry? Was it only, um, when we sort of met that you were diving into fitness? Yeah, the fitness thing came, so I started modeling when I was 18, then at 25 I went to Cape Town and I went on stay for three months and I was by myself and I started just taking myself to the gym and I actually didn't work out between 18 and 25 because you're in this kind of limbo stage with your body where you're like, oh, I don't really need to exercise, oh, I can eat as much as I want, like you don't really see much of a change between 18 and 25 and then when it was 25, my hips, my boobs, my body, like everything started to change I'd get hang out like hangovers and you know a headache I just felt old all of a sudden at 25 and I'm like wait what is happening and so when I started going to the gym I noticed my appearance started to change only slightly it's not it's not huge in, in my body because I have such a, such a slender shape but when I saw my 18 year old body compared to the 25 in an e-commerce shot I was like oh my God, I need to work out more. Why am I not doing this? It seems, why am I sitting on my ass the whole time? Um, and so I started to get a bit addicted to it. And I loved having like three months to myself, eating what I wanted, when I wanted, not having a boy to dictate, you know, my diet and having to cook for two. And so I would train regularly and um, I started to fall in love with it. And I used to be a dancer. So even something as like an hour dance class every now and then, um, just, yeah, revamped my motivation to train. And um, my muscle memory kicked in because I had exercised my whole life up until 18 training as a dancer. And so going into a gym, it felt very natural and I felt very confident and, you know, just my um, muscle memory kicked back in. And then my partner was like, why don't you, why don't you take this more seriously? And I didn't take it seriously for a few years because I just wanted to train for myself. And then I saw my Instagram starting to grow and people asking me about my abs and how do I stay in shape and what do I eat? And I get all these questions and I didn't know how to answer them. And I, it kind of hit me all at once. And I was like, why don't I just get certified? Cause then I can actually answer um, with a certificate behind me to go, oh, I, I know what you're going through. Um, here's some tips and tricks because I don't want to be that influencer or Instagrammer that gives this kind of mediocre advice yeah. um, and flush the market with, you know, 10 questions about themselves on a story going "Oh, what do you eat in a day? And how do you, how do you train? And I just feel like you can have a conversation, but I don't think you should give advice. Um, yeah. So I steer clear of any food advice. Do not ask me about food. Um, I won't I'll give it. But the, I'll I'll that I eat today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh no, it's fine. You can ask me, but it's, it's more of a tool. I won't. I won't tell you what the do's and don'ts are. Yeah. Uh, but back to trading. Like, yeah. Now that I am. 29 so last year just before my wedding and covid i did night school i got certified through tafe um and that was just something that i quite enjoyed didn't know where i was going with it at that point um but wanted the certification to have the conversation and covid hit and then i just got stuck in this funk of like where do i put this energy i don't know where to teach i don't know how who to train should i do boot camps with my head was all over the place and just as gyms open I went up the road to my local um, boxing gym hustle and they offered me a job because they knew I was certified at that point and so I went into boxing like sort of an academy a bit of a training program for three to four months um and was yeah, that in house? Teaching. was that, that in house the um the boxing training was that in house at hustle yeah, um, but my previous boxing experience experience was just through gyms. Like I lived in London, I trained a lot at this other studio called Block, and it's more of a hobby. But then having to break it down and then compute that and tell someone else how to box, that was the challenge. Probably the communication, um, but in terms of like form and technique, it was all there. But having to teach someone is a totally different ball ballpark of. Um, yeah, like I said, communication. So I think that was the hardest thing for me. It wasn't actually the weights or the boxing or the bag work. Yeah. But yeah, it's, I'm still navigating it. I'm really enjoying it. But moving forward into maybe having a family in the next year or two, I'm not going to be able to model throughout. So I want something that can cater in terms of flexibility and fitness and re regaining my body and, um, you know, having something to do yeah. um, going through the whole period of maybe having a young family is what is slowly coming through um, and modeling kind of stepping back. So hopefully 
yeah, the fitness journey continues and grows in the next eight to 10 years. We'll see. Very exciting. What would you, um, you know, obviously having recently gone through a, a bit of a career shift and I'd say that's, you know, a form of taking the plunge. You've, you've been used to something for so long and then you're just so passionate about something, but then it's like, Oh, do I do it? Can't do it full time. Maybe I should do it a bit. Like we've both been there and kind of just gone for it. Mm. Um, what would you say yeah. to someone listening who is maybe doing like just their normal job, right? They might not hate it. They might not love it. They're just doing it, but there's something that's kicking inside of them saying, you got to do this other thing, you know, and they're, and they've sort of put it off, but it's very powerful. That strong voice that, you know, have, I'm have you, sure you've had that experience where you're just like, Oh God, I really got to do it. Like it's going to keep nipping me in the butt until I pay attention to this thing I got to do. What would you say to anyone who's sort of yeah. in that position that might be thinking about taking a plunge or changing in their career? Um, yeah, I have, it's almost like a bit of a doubt. Like you doubt yourself and you're like, what, where am I going? What am I doing? Is there something better or is there an ambition or a goal that I, you know, I've always wanted to do that's burning inside you. And in terms of my journey, it, it was a lot of self discovery and it was just testing the waters every little bit and having conversations and talking to everyone around me. And sometimes you do need to hear it to go, Oh, I'm not crazy. Like that. I'm glad someone's reassured me of that idea. And in terms of me going into fitness, people are like, you're crazy. Why are you not doing it? And then you just got to listen. And that's the hardest thing is, is listening and actually generating that into action. Mm -hmm. And I just said like, I'll put myself through night school. Why not? And if, it, if nothing happens from it, nothing happens from it. But at least... I'm on a journey to know the answer. And with night school, it, there were long days, but it was so fulfilling. Like I would actually get so excited to do an extra two hours every other night um, at TAFE and study and, you know, education. It's so fun to learn again. Um, yeah. I know through high school you drag your feet, but adult learning is, is probably far more interesting than it was back in the day because um, you want to do it and it's something yeah. that you get to pick instead of you know, being told what to learn. Um, so yeah, I think ultimately you, you do have to listen is the key to yourself and to others. And just, just baby steps, little nudges in the right direction. And honestly, that just keeps snowballing into an opportunity and you allow a lot of doors to open and then you just navigate it. And, and it's okay to take a risk, I think, because like every day with castings and jobs, like I put myself on the line all the time being self-employed. And I don't know, it just fuels me. I, I kind of get off on it and I love winning people over and I love meeting um, you especially and the hustle crew and you just never know what happens happens from it so there's the power of yes in reverse so <laughs> you that's do, right. you do on the flip to do. no yeah. that's true and I agree with, totally agree with everything you've said and if I could just add to that you know I think for anyone thinking or oh, should I take the plunge should I try out that thing other than listening to yourself and others like it really is like once you just start talking about it, it becomes a thing. You know, once you start bouncing ideas off people, it starts becoming a reality. So I feel like if you start thinking about it and start talking about it, it just somehow, <laughs> it just happens. And it's because you're just opening yourself up to the opportunity. You're not like leaving it shut in the corner. So it is about being open and listening. So and you're accountable. Like, you know, yeah. you pulled me up for this conversation about checking in on a few of my ideas and it's like something that went over my head and I forgot that I told you, but how nice of you to go and kick me up the butt and go, well, what, what happened to that conversation we were talking about? And it is accountability and I love it. And it just, again, just sparks you to want to do it and hold yourself to your word or your, into your ideas. That's right. And at the end of the day, if you think something's a good idea, a majority of people will think it's a good idea too. So yeah. just go for it. Why not? Now, speaking of you as a model, so you were just, you, we just retouched on it then. Can you talk to me? I think there's, um, like you said, there's a big stigma around models and the industry in itself, but obviously you've been in it for, you know, quite some time now, over a decade. And um, I don't know if you've experienced like a big shift in the industry or not, or, it, or perhaps even in the kind of jobs you do, but can you talk to me a little bit about the biggest challenges and the biggest rewards in modeling? I love this question because my head is doing like 360s. Um, <laughs> yes, there's always challenges. I think one, I guess the movement of modeling, let's just start there. So when I first started, it was very much tall 
in Slender. And that wasn't that long ago. That's probably 10 years ago, just before Instagram hit. And it was very much the iconic model would book the jobs, those interesting faces, you know, building careers. They were, they were kind of like the magazine girls. And that would, that was my dream. I'd love to be in a magazine and 10 years down the track. Like, it's so funny. I'd rather get like an influencer campaign and I, or a modeling campaign, something a bit more commercial where I know that there's like so much money behind it or the opportunity is incredible. The brand relationship is there. And and, you know, magazines are dead. That whole dream of being on the cover of a magazine is gone. And just going from like this iconic pinup 90s sort of early 2000s modeling into a social media world where it's about personalities and maintaining um, relationships with jobs, not just booking a one hit wonder um, client. Uh, it is very much about rebooking jobs and any beautiful girl can have an opportunity, but can you keep working with that brand and outsource, you know, um, influencer work outside of it and, um, yeah, cre create those relationships. But, um, that is a blessing and a curse with social media because <sighs> you, you don't want to give up on, it sounds so bad. Oh my God. I can't remember saying this, but um, there is very much an Instagram model and there's still very much like a actual model model, like a full-time model. And the difference I have to say is work ethic. Whereas um, the models in the agencies that I work with, um, they know their worth. They know their image in a different way. Whereas Instagram, you kind of sell yourself short to a lot of quick, it's a bit like a, a cash scheme. I don't know, a get rich quick scheme where you know that you can work with a tea brand, a Coke brand, a water brand, blah, 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 for all these little bits of money. Um, and you kind of sell yourself to the devil a little bit, but with modeling work, um, you know how your image, you know that you're only one image, you know how to market that. And, um, I'm waffling. Oh my God. I'm waffling. So no, much. no. Yeah. This, this is but, a challenge. It is a challenge now that it's shifted to social media. Like it's completely added it robs, transformed parts of it. Yeah. And then it robs the actual models of their work. And then the models kind of need to be in the influencer game yeah. to keep the work going. So it's like chicken and the egg at the moment with modeling and Instagram. Um, but I've definitely seen a massive, uh, shift in the last 10 years because then I had to get it and then I had to grow with it mm. and you know I still do but I don't want to sign up and hand my life over to social media um, I still want the barrier there where you know I do think about maybe starting a family do I want that child on my Instagram am I going to monetize that moment um, so it's about protecting kind of like it's separating me as the brand idea and marketing is like, this is, this is the image that I want to create, but also having the personal moments with family and friends where I don't have to share things and actually put up a wall and go, okay, everyone cool your jets. I'm not having a conversation about X, Y, Z. Um, yeah. So that's the hard part is knowing where to draw the line and where not to kind of keep selling yourself because you are a product in a way. Mm. Um, but the advantages are, they counteract any of the negatives. I mean, I love the travel, the, the ability to get an American visa, a UK visa, to you know, jump on a plane in a heartbeat and go across the world and work on an amazing job is also exhausting, but so liberating at the same time. Um, so travel was probably the biggest reward out of the whole um, scenario. And I have to say the girls, um, that I worked with, that's probably another thing that's changed. At first, everyone protected their jobs. No one wanted to share. No one would want to build up another girl and say, hey, can you, can you take this job off me? I can't do it today because you'd be too scared you'd lose it out. But these days, everyone networks. Everyone's on Instagram. We've got group chats going. Oh, I can't work this job. Can you work that job? Oh, do you like that client? Do you not like that client? Do you like that photographer? Oh, I've heard bad things about that photographer. So I think the transparency has shifted as well, where everyone used to protect everything and kind of, it was very competitive. And now everyone's giving each other a leg up and wanting to help and have the, the open discussions about, um, yeah, the difficulties that we might have or face because, yeah, for example, with a photographer, they might ask you to get nude or like, I don't know, get topless. And you're like, wait a second, does everyone shoot this way? So then you get on your phone, you text a bunch of girls that you've seen work with them. How did you feel about that photographer? What did you think? Um, any tips? And so, uh, yeah, I think a lot of people get caught out now that we can, we can openly talk about these 
Yeah, and, and that's yeah. totally not a bad thing. Um, but of course, with, with any is any new development comes so many like benefits and and unintended, I think, negatives as well. So, uh, like speaking of life on social media, what are your yeah. thoughts on like? You know, obviously you've had to go from being the classic model and then you, you kind of, it's kind of like keeping up with the Joneses, right? Like you really do need to have an online presence and it is a, it is a nice open way to connect with brands and people who are genuinely interested in your journey as well. But how have you found that, um, you know, in terms of your personal life, like, would you say, cause I don't, I don't know. I mean, just seeing your Instagram, I wouldn't say it's really much of your personal life. Like it is more, um, your your working staff and promoting yourself but how do you personally feel about like upkeeping a page with almost 150k followers uh yeah this is a regular conversation actually with me and my friends um because we could be at uh events or influencer dinners or you know social occasions just on you know just a regular dinner and it's funny how like you separate some girls to others where they have their phone out constantly. They're capturing every minute, every bite of their food, who they're with, they're, they, they're always switched on. And then you've got a few like me where I'm just like, oh, I'm here for a purpose. I'm gonna put my phone down. I'll get my homework done at the start of the, of the night and just unplug. Um, and some people can't unplug, which is difficult to have relationships, like meaningful relationships with those um, those girls or those talent. Um, and you understand it at the same time because you know they're, they're such bosses in their field and they do that for a reason. And that is pretty much their job, their full-time job. So you can understand it. But for those that are just walking into the room and going, oh my God, what is going on? There's like 10, 20 girls at dinner and they're all like, dressed up and taking photos and stuff and it's just too, it's through the roof um content it feels a little uncomfortable sometimes um for anyone else that's sitting at the dinner table because they'll filter their, their images and talk about their captions and you can't have a genuine conversation mm. and all you want to do is go hey like how's your family how's your mom and um yeah, it's, you, it's hard to pierce the wall of a lot of people. And so with my own account, um, like I said, I don't really like to sell myself too short. I, I know what I use it for and then I know what is mine. And so what you don't see is a lot of my personal moments with friends and family and stuff because I do keep it work and that's all it is. And then at the end of the day, I just check off. I don't want to be on my phone every other hour because it's just way too much. And I have to say, I've got a lot of friends with social anxiety um, and depression and body image issues because they are always online and having to work full time and social media can be um, quite degrading. Um, so I just protect myself and I don't like to share it that much. Um, but it is very much a highlight reel. There is a lot that goes on behind the scenes, which is very much personal and for me and my husband or for my family. So yeah, I think you just have to draw the line somewhere and each to their own. There's nothing wrong if you if you want to make a career out of social media. But um, yeah, it, that will explain why my numbers don't grow at such a speed or um, yeah. I don't know. I don't share a lot of stories or talk to the camera quite a lot, but I can. It just, I just pick and choose my battles. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's actually um, a nice way to end that segment. Like you've just got to pick and choose your boundaries with social media, whether you're using it personally or professionally, like, there's got to be a line because at the end of the day, there's reality and then there's online and, you know, yeah. The, yeah, while the two can, can merge in an online sense in the real world, you know, you still got to be present to some degree. And I think it's a challenge we all have and definitely, you know, scrolling through and feeling that, you know, like you're constantly being like pinned against others or you're constantly just comparing yourself. I do it all the time. Like you just jump on and instantly like your thought process is like, how do I fare? Or like you just instantly go into this comparative mode. It's so easy to get stuck in a loop as well. So it is about just having those boundaries. Like for me personally, it's um, an hour before I go to bed, I don't go on. An hour before I wake up, sometimes not always achievable, but I try not to go on too. Cause it's, it's just hard like, with work. Yeah. It, Cause then not, you get a DM or a message that's work related and you're actually yeah. on Instagram and my husband will look over my shoulder. He's like, why are you on Instagram? I'm like, well, I'm actually working at this point. I'm just communicating to a brand, but um, what was yeah. he say? Just about setting the boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the morning one's hard, but the night one is like non-negotiable. It's so easy to do. Like I can just read and stretch instead or just be with my partner. Like it's, 
It's very doable. I mean, it's such an endorphin hit when you see those likes and those comments come up. Like when it's literally, you know what it is? Instagram is like a poker machine. When you scroll down and you refresh and you wait for something to pop up, you just get so addicted to it. And you know what, if you're finding fulfillment there, then you're not looking up and out at the world. And I think, I think once you put your phone down and you connect, it's just, it's such a relief. It feel, I think I, I feel better when I'm off my phone than I do on it. So uh, I think that explains a lot of my social media choices. Um, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not actually good at posting a lot of my caption stuff and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, <laughs> that in itself is like... It. Yeah, that in itself is like a whole day prep to like plan out captions and all that. But that's it. That can be another, you can do a workshop on that if you like. <laughs> no, I would be terrible. This is what I'm saying is like, I haven't, I haven't really like given it my all. Um, yeah. But yeah. Well, look, you're doing, you're doing absolutely fine. And I think, I think the way you're headed, you know, there's ample opportunity. You just got to keep going, keep, the, keep looking up and out, not down and in. Yes. Out. I'm looking out the window right now. <laughs> Before we um, move off the topic of like modeling, um, whether it has been through Instagram or through like an agent, what's the coolest job you've ever booked or your favorite? Oh my God. So many. And like, this is the thing, like I know modeling is not a forever job and it's funny cause like I'm still in it after 10 years. I always said to my partner at 25, that's it. I'm done. I know I'm done. But again, I'm still in it. And it's like an abusive relationship where it's like some days it's just so tough, but you go back for more and I'm like, <laughs> Oh, what am I doing? I need to get a job. And like, I'm not getting paid or, you know, there's so many difficulties with it, but then I'm like, I love it. I need to keep going. Um, it'd be crazy not to stop. And I can't believe I'm so fortunate to keep doing it, but that has to do with the relationships that you create and, um, the brands and managers yeah, cool. you have. But, uh, the best job I ever had one that kind of stands out it's not really that cool, but it was cool to me. Um, ASICS, the shoe brand, again, not a great brand. It's a bit, a bit dad-like, but um, flew me to Valencia in Spain. And it was four days of their winter collection. So we had to run for 14 hours straight every day for four days straight. Wow. And it was so painful but I have to say the views and the vantage points and the drones and the sets and the everything I felt like I was on a movie with a, an amazing team of talent that you know some were athletic some weren't some were just models that looked right for the role um, and we had the best time in our hotel rooms and bonding and traveling and sneaking out to the shops whenever we could and taking everything in so yeah it wasn't very much an iconic moment but then I walked through Oxford Street in London and I was all over like billboards and posters and it's very surreal to go oh my god that was a hard day but it was so fruitful and so like amazing to see the reward out of it yeah. um and then an influencer trip took me to thailand with like 20 girls and that was just the best time ever um making new friendships meeting girls from all around the world that you've seen on social media and actually sitting down and having a meal with them and going oh, what is going on i feel like i know you but let's get to know each other and we were eating scorpions in the streets and we were dancing on tables it was just yeah, Thailand was amazing. We were with elephants. I, I couldn't, I, I could roll off a hundred stories. It was the best time of my life. So yeah, a lot of the travel aspect and it kind of kicks in, but if I could ever have a dream job, and again, it's not Victoria's Secret as everyone else would say, it would actually be like a Coca-Cola ad or a Corona ad and going out and like doing an amazing um, drinks commercial campaign. Cause technically that's where the money is. So there's a, there's a fast tip for you. There you go. For anyone listening, wants to get into modeling, there you go. Write that down. <laughs> yes. Buy past Victoria's oh. Secret, go for Corona or Coca-Cola. <laughs> Although as a side note, I would definitely be watching the runway if you were on Victoria's Secret show. <laughs> oh my God. There was a part of me back in the day, but now it's a new age where there's no Victoria's Secret. Maybe a Fenty show with Rihanna, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's another topic. I think I've entered the two fit stage to be sort of lingerie. So I don't know. It's hard to keep up with what trends are, are going, but yeah. yeah. Well, I like the way, I like the way it's heading. It feels like more, um, it's, it's less of a single look and more of a, you know, any, I think if you wear your confidence, like you can really rock anything. And I think a lot of brands picking up on that and they want that vibe in their, you know, in their campaigns and their marketing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and 
Yeah, I definitely think, you know, being unique and having shape, size, color, hair, teeth, nails, whatever's different is amazing. I'm all for it. Um, but it's also about the personalities and that's where the social media aspect kicks in is because, you know what, it could be just your neighbor who suddenly develop, develops YouTube, but it's not so much their look, it's more of their personality and they could be flown across the world to go to a Tommy Hilfiger show. So um, I like the fact that it's very accessible to enter into media, marketing, modeling, YouTube, whatever. It's, it's very much anyone could choose this avenue and I'm, I'm very excited to see where it takes us all, but I hope that we do put our phones down every now and then. Yes, I mean, agree. Great. Agreed. <laughs> A um, couple things before you go, I want to know, because I saw you post a couple um, weeks or months ago, you put up this post, you had your hair in a bun, you said, here's a tip for everyone. If you need to do it, if your hair is dirty or something and you go into the gym, you can put in a hair mask and your hair will be in a bun and you can train with the hair mask in and allow it to sit. And I just thought that is fantastic. Like that's not something I've yeah. ever thought of doing. And that's such a great idea. So I want to know right now what other health tips I need, or beauty tips I need in my life. Little life hacks. Yeah, I love the bun one because, yeah, I just don't have time in the house or in the shower to just leave a hair mask in. So I'll literally brush it through, do a nice slick bun. You look still amazing and fresh. It looks probably um, better than a normal fresh. bun to the gym. <laughs> it, yeah, and it holds really well. Yeah. Um, so that's my favorite one. Um, there's a few little things that I picked up over the years. I mean, if you're trying to do your hair, I've really curly hair, I've straightened it today because it was just a fright. You should have seen me an hour ago. Um, <laughs> do not straighten your hair, then curl it because back in the day, everyone would try and smooth it all out and get all that, that kind of fuzz um, out and then curl into it because the curls obviously don't hold as well. Um, and that's pretty, that's, that's not a very interesting one. But uh, on top of the curls, um, aspect oh my god i'm waff waffling again uh, i've got too many ideas in my head when you have curl scrap that idea scrap it you're not, you're not worrying about the curls scrap that idea. <laughs> my favorite one is for curly hair girls you do not dry your hair with a towel you have to get a cotton t-shirt and you have to brush out your hair put so much moisture on, in it you need it to be very wet very hydrated and then you use a wet um sorry use a cotton t-shirt to scrunch the bottom mm -hmm. and then your ringlets will form but if you use a towel it pulls the water out so you won't get that nice ringlet effect so now that i'm wearing my hair more natural it takes two seconds just get an old t-shirt and scrunch it um uh, my favorite products is elizabeth arden eight hour balm use it on everything uh i wear it regularly to bed so my lips and like my skin is very dewy and hydrated um Oh, and when you are doing like a slick bun look and you're trying to get out like that kind of kinky line bits oh, that yeah. go through your scalp and hair, you have to get a toothbrush and then you use a toothbrush and it smooths it all out and makes it nice and flat and soft. So if you're doing a slick bun look, use a toothbrush. Um, gel versus hairspray. Don't use hairspray, use gel. Um, exfoliate. Oh my God, big one. So if you're trying to maintain a tan, fake or real or whatever, you religiously have to exfoliate to get those like little glove mitten things. And I could be standing in the shower squatting and just like rubbing my butt on my legs or whatever, but that just gets through the cellulite, but also helps you maintain a tan real or fake. And then you just obviously have to moisturize yep. all the time, which is a hard one to always do and keep up with. Um, I'm just like out of the shower, moisturize. Like that's just the ritual. So I don't Are you? Yeah, so that's I, don't the fiber. I don't, I don't even like, I'm the model. I should be doing that. Oh my God. <laughs> um, yeah. And obviously take your makeup off at all times. Like I'm not even wearing makeup. I've got a bit of mascara on actually. That's a lie. I put that on for you. Um, Thanks, honey. I avoid makeup as much as possible. Honestly. Um, even when I'm on nights out or whatever, a bit of concealer, brow and a lash. Um, yeah. I'm kind of anti makeup if I can help it mm. all the time. Nice to let the skin breathe, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I probably have so many more and I just can't think of that. All good. I think that's heaps. I'm, I'm quite happy with that list. Thank you. <laughs> Hair related ones. Now that I thought about it. Anyway. All good. I'm sure people can slide into your DMs if they want more. <laughs> yeah. I bet you will end this conversation and I'll think of like 10 more and I'll be like, oh, why don't they do that? Anyway. Yeah. All good. All right. Last thing before I let you go, and this kind of relates to uh, balance as a, as a wider concept. So I guess when we speak about balance on the podcast, it really is about, you know, acknowledging that not every day is perfect and that those 
low moments, high moments, they're going to come and go in life. And so balance to me, when I speak about it is it's your resilience in those low moments and it's your appreciation in the high moments and the dance between the two. And it's unrealistic to think that, you know, your life is going to be like what you see on social media, which is just a highlights reel. And I think it's important to arm people with, you know, tools and tips. And that's why I love having guests on interesting, different people like yourself who can just share their own experiences and life stories. And people can just take away, like I always take away a little something from every guest I have on. And that helps me in my life dance, you know, to ma manage my own balance. But anyway, that whole circular explanation is to ask you this question. <laughs> and that is yeah. when, you, when you are feeling down. So when you're at those low moments, what are your go-tos? What helps you be resilient or bounce, I guess, bounce back? Yeah. I naturally, I am just such a yes, vivacious, love life kind of gal, but that's not always, and not, not many people see the lows. Like I had really bad anxiety, which is really silly before I got married. So um, just after I got proposed to and getting married, I had knots in my stomach. I didn't even know what anxiety was. I was like, what the hell's going on? And it was probably one of my lowest kind of mental health points. Cause I was like, I should be so happy. Like what is going on with me right now? And having the discussions going and claiming, you know, that I am feeling vulnerable right now. Many people were like, oh, I felt anxious before my wedding. Oh, I had family issues before my wedding. And I was like, why don't we talk about this? Like we were all talking about the high notes of like getting married and having these great occasions and it's all about celebrating love. And it wasn't doubt about my partner. It was very much doubt about the day and the family and the money and like what is going on. And I was like, oh, like, I'm so happy that people have shared the lows. Um, the highs are all there, but no, no one really lets themselves go and be vulnerable to that. So mm -hmm. that was probably my real anxious sort of discovery. And how to get through that was the conversational point. Um, but in terms of my mental health and just letting things go quite literally, I would do a spin class, I would run, I would go to the gym because you have that hour to yourself. Like I keep saying, like, you know, just just claim that hour to yourself. But in the physical sense, like I would get such an endorphin boost mm. um, from exercising and also just clearing my mind and just getting a sweat on and meeting people in the moment of a class and, you know, um, getting myself out of my bubble and there'd be 10 girls at a KX Pilates class that I've never met before, but a quick hello and a conversation at the desk or in, in the reformer bed. Oh, it just pulls you out of your funk. Um, so Thank for me, I... Yeah, I really claim back um, myself and my mind um, when I exercise. And I know that's nothing new, but I really stand by it wholeheartedly. And that's why I'm in the fitness industry, because I love seeing people just light up. You never regret a workout um, and you feel 10 times better about yourself no matter what afterwards. So yeah, that's probably my balance. Yeah. yeah, no, I totally agree. And that's why I do it first thing in the morning. It actually helps me reset before I even start the day, like to start on a clean slate. And so I definitely rate, and I'm sure a lot of people listening um, also relate. So thank you for sharing that. Really do appreciate it. And I really appreciate your time having come on, sharing your journey. And I feel so privileged to you know, be so close and be able to watch you grow as a trainer. I mean, like I've only done a few of your classes, but truthfully, anyone listening who's been dying to try hustle because it's always on my story. So everyone knows, like I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> Definitely yeah, we love you. Head, on, head on down and you need to check out the schedule. Um, Shannon will be the best class. If Sam's listening right now, he's not going to be too happy with me, but it's no new. No, I can play this at hustle. Be like, Sam, are you listening? <laughs> It's nothing new for him to know that my favorite's been changed. <laughs> but, um, but yes, thank you so much for your time. I'll let you go and enjoy your Friday. I know you've got more than one hour to yourself today, which is incredible. And I hope you just oh, let your I'm hair down and it up. chill out. <laughs> but um, mm. yes, so excited to see where the future takes you. And thank you again. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited for your journey too. And like listening to this and the network that you're building and the, and the boot camps and your full-time job. And like I said before, I think someone needs to interview you because you have so much to give. And uh, you know, I learned a lot from this as well, this conversation. So thank you. I appreciate it. And if you ever want to interview me, you can just call me up <laughs> when you start your oh, I'll just catch you at hustle like next time. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you so much. And that's a wrap for this week, Balancers. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you found this episode useful to some degree in either steering or determining your definition of balance today. 
As always, the biggest compliment for us is if you share this episode with someone who you feel might need it, or if you're on Spotify, you can click follow or on Apple Podcasts, you can leave a rating or review. If you have any suggestions for up and coming podcasts, feel free to shoot us a DM or an email. Our Instagram is at the balance theory and our email is the balance theory podcast at gmail.com. Otherwise, you've always got the option of subscribing to our mailing list. We only send you email reminders when the episodes drop so you get them fresh out of the oven. No annoying spam, we promise. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week and until next time, stay balanced. Stop, stop, stop.